In the last third of the course, we're going to explore government surveillance when it is used for national security purposes and when it is directed at individuals outside the United States. As we're going to see, while much of the terminology is very similar, the rules can be very different. In general, legal protections are much more lax when surveillance is related to national security and when surveillance is directed outside the United States. Both the Fourth Amendment and statutory privacy protections are watered down. Moreover, these areas of law have largely developed in secret ex parte proceedings, even more so than the law that applies to ordinary law enforcement. My hope is that this part of the course will give you a much richer explanation than you might find elsewhere. We're going to explore these areas of surveillance in two segments. This part focuses on how constitutional and statutory protections are different in national security contexts and when applied outside the United States. In particular, we're going to look at the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA, which is roughly the intelligence parallel to ECPA. In the next and final part of the course, we're going to look at specific National Security Agency surveillance programs. We're going to explore how those programs seem to technically operate, and we're going to explore the legal underpinnings of those programs. Before turning to the substantive material, I want to make three notes. First, my aim here is to describe the law as best I can, and to present the best articulation of competing views. If you get frustrated with the state of the law, please don't take it out on me. I certainly don't agree with everything I'm about to present. Second, as we move through this part of the course, try to keep in mind how the rules compare to what we've learned about ordinary law enforcement. Some of this area of law is going to look very similar to what we've already seen under ECPA. Not identical, but very similar. Other parts are going to look totally alien, with substantially lesser protections, and substantially different statutory interpretations that seem like they would never fly for ordinary law enforcement. So keep that in the back of your mind. Third, this part of the course, perhaps more than any other, will challenge you to think like a lawyer. You'll need to separate the law as it is from the law as you think it should be. That's a very important skill, since it allows you to better predict how courts might rule, it allows you to make more effective critiques of current practices, and it allows you to more precisely suggest reforms. All right, with those three notes, let's turn to the substantive material.